nothing of what it seems to be on this or any other world. The strangest things that are bound to the most ordinary corner and under the plainest of wrappings come to the weirdest of substances. Take this young woman, for example. Her head is not filled with anything but an ordinary, common or garden brain, just like you. Her world is pretty much like your world too. Or is it? Here is her story. The day was starting. What had surprised it was the same thing that had surprised it the morning before, and the morning before that, and the morning before the morning before that. It always got a shock first thing in the morning, which made it jump into the sky. Only the day knew what was so new that it came like a bolt out of the blue to shake it awake like that. On this morning, our young woman pulled her spider-thread stockings onto her spindly pins and put on her favourite dress. She would always count the oyster shell buttons as she did them up, just to make sure that none were missing, or hiding, as buttons like to do. Next, she would make her hair look like a bird's nest, in the hope that a sparrow or wren would like the look of it and decide to make its home on her head. So far, no bird had looked twice at this tressy des res, but the young woman didn't despair. Twelve twigs and eleven leaves and a broken branch were teased and plattered lovingly into her lamb's tail locks. After her hair, her makeup. She hadn't learnt properly from anyone else how to apply lipstick, or how to paint her cheeks with blusher, or how to shadow her eyes. Every new day she would draw around her eyes intricate lines like the veins of leaves or snowflake patterns. And every new day she would look in the mirror to make sure that she was licking her lips and not somebody else's before dib-dabbing them with sherbet. And every new day she would pinch her cheeks to make sure they weren't dreaming. And this would make them glow like, well... Like your cheeks if you were to pinch them. Last of all, her boots. Her boots were made of unicorn skin and lined with chimera fur. There was a dragon's tongue in each one and they had cockatrice soles. Threaded through the cyclops' eyelets were silver licorice laces. These were no good, of course, for doing up the boots, so the young woman would leave them undone. She never had to run so there was no chance that her boots would fall off. When she was finally ready, the young woman would stand in front of the mirror with her eyes shut and tell herself how beautiful she looked. And it was true. On this same day, the young woman set off for the shops. She waited for the bus, but it didn't come, so she decided to walk. She liked to walk on days like this one, when the clouds couldn't decide which way to go and the moon was still visible. She would peer into people's houses and smile at them, even though they were sometimes cross with her for staring at them. She meant no harm. She was just curious. She liked best the house with the avocado velvet curtains and lemon lintel above the door of dill. And the old man who lived there liked the young woman to look at his house. He would wait at his window every day, wishing that she would walk by and gaze into his garden. He thought that the young woman seemed sad, with her hedge hair and fragile frock. This day he had prepared a special gift for the young woman. He was an expert maker of confectionery. He loved to invent new centres for his sweets, like straw and berry cream, hazelnut shell in honey, and peach stone parfait. He would cover the centres with the finest chocolate of all the different colours. Then he would arrange them carefully in a box and wrap it all in crumpled tissue paper, whatever he had to hand. Today he had made a fine selection box of catmint caramels and dogberry delights and surrounded it with yesterday's television pages, all tied up with a piece of garden twine. He was sure that the young woman would like this present. Sure enough, as we already know, 
The young woman was walking past the old man's house at just the moment he was tying the granny knot in the garden twine. He looked up to see her eyeing him through his curtains. He beckoned the young woman to enter his gate. The young woman had never spoken to anyone she hadn't known before, and was quite rightly reluctant to go into the old man's garden. Don't be afraid, called the old man as he opened his door. I have something for you. In his goose-flesh hand, the young woman could see a small box. I, I, I'm sorry, she stuttered. I made these for you. I'm sure that you like them, said the old man in his kindest but crackliest voice. Th th thank you, stammered the young woman, nervous and unsure. The old man hobbled down his cobbled path towards the young woman, his outstretched hand holding the gift. She smiled her sweetest smile and reached out for the box. So, so, so kind of you, strained the young woman, not used to receiving presents. Please, Please tell me, me, what is your name? name? I see, see you every, every time, time you walk by and look into, into my house, house and, and I dream about you and imagine the world you live in, in but I don't know your name. name. Please, Please tell me it, it, urged the old man. D -d Dawn, stressed the young woman. My name is Dawn, like, like the, the rising, rising of the, the sun you are, you are to me, smiled the old man as he put the box of bonbons in her delicate digits. Here, Here eat these and enjoy, enjoy them, but I don't eat them all, all at once, once or, or you might feel Ill, Ill, he warned. And I, I wish, wish you everything, everything that you want. want. You, have you have made me happy, happy by taking, taking my, my gift. gift. I am a happy old man, he maudlinly mused. As he said this, the young woman caught a glimpse of the old man when he was the same age as she was then, and he caught a glimpse of her, how she might look when she was the same age as him. He could have been her brother, and she could have been his sister. Both of them were handsome and beautiful, young and old. Now, now go and do your shopping, shopping. I, must I must rest, rest sighed the old man, for it had been a busy day, and he was tired. The the thank you again streamed from the young woman's candy-coated mouth, and she leant into the old man's garden and planted a perfumed kiss on his rose-petal cheek. With no more words, the two of them turned to leave. He went indoors, and she headed straight home, forgetting all about her errands. When she arrived home, the young woman placed the parcel onto her floor and lay with her chin in her hand just looking at the box with its gold leaf covering and satin ribbon bow. Very slowly she loosened the bow and peeled away the covering and carefully lifted the top off the box. Looking into the box she could see the most delectable sweets she had ever seen. They were curled like snails and coloured like oil on water. They smelt of lilies and remains. Overcome by their fragrance, and with taste buds tingling, her dainty fingers gently removed a sweet from the box. It seemed to float into her mouth and sink into her tongue. It radiated warmth through her whole being. Without thinking, she plucked another from the box and slipped it past her lovely lips. It was like being lowered into a black treacle blancmange or being cuddled by a big blue blanket. As soon as she had swallowed that sweet, she was back inside the box to find the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth. With each comfort came a new comfort. A glowing log fire of happiness inside her heart. A cosy pair of smile slippers on her toes. A curled up cat on her lap, purring all of her favourite tunes. And then, she came to the last chocolate in the box. Now, this young woman should have remembered the words of the old man, but his sweets were so exquisite that she clean forgot what he had said. Time slipped into slow motion as the one remaining sweet went from her hand to her mouth. And time all but stopped as her milky teeth bit down onto the chocolate shell, releasing the thick, oozing jelly inside. 
In the old man's house a very old clock was getting ready to announce the morning of a new day. With a whirr and a click, the clock struck its little bells with its minute hammer, telling the old man to open his eyes to let in the light. Hearing the dingly dongly song of his trusty clock, the old man peeped out from underneath his quilt. But he was alarmed to see that there was no light, only darkness. Have you finally given up the ghost in your machinery, my faithful friend? he asked the clock. Being only a clock, it didn't answer, save for its usual response of tick-tock, tackety-tock. The old man squinted to make out the time. Seven o'clock. If you're right, then something's wrong, he pondered. The old man got out of bed and went to his window. He drew back his drapes to see... Not much. He could just about make out his neighbours and the milkman, standing in the street, scratching their heads in bewilderment. What could have happened? Along the road, a tiny bird, who was also somewhat confused, was searching for a new place to live. It came across an open window, and not knowing any better, flew in. Inside there was a young woman, our young woman, lying on the floor, surrounded by a whole flock of other tiny birds. She did not move. She did not breathe. She did not open her eyes to see the wings and tails of the birds. She did not notice the birds picking at her hair. She did not hear them twittering, although they were singing for her.